So I jacked up my back about a month ago and it's just continuing to get worse. Uh, I had to miss a lot of time in the clinic, been in and out of the clinic as well. And then I finally went back to the clinic and had this interaction with a client that was very delusional, decided that they wanted to play the victim role and really didn't want to take their own health seriously and participate in the process. And I found myself being very cynical because I was dealing with my own issues and going through everything. But what I realized is so much of the world is stuck in this victimhood and people blame everything else, you know, circumstances and other people, but they never take full responsibility for their health. So in this episode, I really wanted to dive in about what happens when people play victims, how to recognize it, how to handle it, and most importantly, how to not be a victim yourself. I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks so much for listening. If you want help on the path to being able to double your income all while working 50% less and being taken seriously as a healthcare provider, I have some great resources for you. Number one, get access to our free training modules and introduction to my system, The Peak Method. Number two, subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Soft Tissue Revolution. Links to all of this can be found in the show notes. Lastly, if you like the show, please leave us a five-star review and share it with others that you know it could help. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Soft Tissue Revolution podcast, where we teach massage therapists a new treatment system that focuses on working smarter, not harder, allowing them to cut their treatment times by 50% so they can stay healthy and help more people get out of pain. Dr. Matt Maggio here. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the show. Let's jump right into it. Don't let your clients be victims, and definitely don't be a victim yourself. So... It's, it's, it's going to be a month today. About a month ago, uh, I flared up my low back, uh, my history of my low back. I blew out a couple discs uh, playing football back in the day, uh, back in the glory days. Um, and usually the back stays pretty good. You know, I get some low level back pain here and there, but maybe once or twice a year, it really locks up on me, almost leaves me incapacitated for a few days. You know, I usually have to take some time off of work. Usually it's just my own fault because. I'm not keeping up with getting treatment. You know, most of us as soft tissue practitioners are huge hypocrites. We tell people they need to get treatment more often, but we don't do it ourselves. I got a little lapse in my walking, uh, my corrective exercises, all that stuff. And I had a pretty significant flare up. Um, and this one lasted a lot longer than it usually does. It lasted for about two weeks. Uh, I thought I was out of it, tried to get back into it again. And then the middle of last week, um, tweaked it again. And here I am a month later still dealing with it. And it's really just messed with me mentally. I I try to look at everything that happens to, to me as like part of fate or what the universe wants. And I really think the universe gave me this injury so I can have better empathy and help understand other people that are in pain and what they're going through. And I had to take a little bit of time off work. Uh, I took about a week off and then I got back and then I got really triggered by a new client that ended up being what I call a professional victim. So this client, um, I'm 37, they're twice my age, they're 74, and they're very uh, metabolically compromised. That's a nice way of me saying that they're very unhealthy and they don't take care of themselves. And they were complaining a lot about their pain, all the stuff they went through, how hard it is to get up in the morning to move, to all this stuff. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, shit, man, I didn't say it out loud, but I'm thinking like, you don't even know what fucking pain is. Like I had to crawl out of bed for a week straight and I'm half your age. And I still do all the shit that I need to do. I eat right. I move right. I breathe right. I exercise. I do that. And I'm still in pain. So that really sucks. So I found myself becoming really cynical, you know, and cynical is not a good way to be, but it was my own shit. And I ended up getting into, I guess, a spat or a verbal argument um, with this client. And then I, I, I started getting curious. And when I get curious, I like to ask questions. And sometimes they come across as I'm being a real asshole or a dick. But I was just curious at what miracle this person was expecting, you know, for treating their body like shit for probably, I don't know, three fourths of their lives, not taking care of themselves. What did they expect was going to happen? And being surprised that things have failed. I'm like, imagine if you um, 
had your car and you never did any maintenance forever and it just blew up. You'd expect that to happen, but you didn't take care of your body. And then all of a sudden you're like, you want this quick miracle and you want this quick fix, but you're also not willing to do anything. Like they just sit around in the morning and they're pain and they're like, Oh, what was me? This sucks. Yeah, it fucking sucks. I wake up in the morning and I had to roll out of bed for the last month and had to crawl into my, to my home gym and get on the treadmill, get moving. But you know what? That's the shit you got to do to get better. But I found myself becoming really cynical. And then I realized that so many people out there and myself included over the years have become sucked into what I call victimhood. You know, originally I'd say 15 or 20 years ago, we felt bad for victims. Like when shitty things happen to people, like we genuinely felt bad for their situation, what happened. But what we're doing now in society is we're like applauding victims and you get kudos for being a victim. Like, no, that's not the case. And you shouldn't be that way either. Yeah, fucked up things happen to people. But if you're going to sit there and blame everything that happened in the past and why you can't move forward and actually take some responsibility for your own health, you're never going to be able to get out of the way. So in this episode, I really wanted to break down what just understanding humans. Uh, I always talk about my favorite book of all time is The Laws of Human Nature. It's a must read um, really for anyone, but especially for us in the soft tissue world and dealing with people that are in pain because pain can really fuck with you and mess with you. But humans are really weird and they're built in with all these different types of biases. And one of the worst biases that they have is called blame bias, where they blame everything else except for themselves. And there's really three layers to this. You know, the first layer is they blame the circumstances. They might blame, I don't have enough time for this. Uh, I don't have enough money. Those are like the real shallow ones. Then they get into the second layer, which is where they start to blame other people. You know, they might be like, well, I got kids. I can't, I can't focus on my health right now because I have kids. Um, my partner or my spouse needs me and I'm too busy. Uh, maybe they start blaming the genetics like, oh, I just have a bad back or bad knee or bad hip or shoulder because my mom had bad bad, whatever they have bad health. They're like, well, my mom was fat. My dad was fat. So I'm fat too. And they really do that. Now the third one, this is where you become a really truly evolved human is when you actually take blame for yourself. You, you, you own it. And this is really only like a highly involved, evolved, uh, set of the population. I'd say like 2%, you know, for years I've been stuck. I, st I really got stuck in the number two, you know, blaming others and blaming circumstances, you know, with my body being fucked up. I'm like, well, I played football and that was stupid. And I shouldn't have played football. I wish I never did. It fucked up my body, blah, 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 blah. Like I can't change that. I did that. That's what I chose to do. And I've really evolved into the third one. And that helps me understand things like taking radical responsibility for my health and what I do and knowing that it is up to me and no one really cares about my story or my my victimhood because it doesn't get me anywhere. It's like, what did you do after some bad shit happened to you? There's a lot of people that have had way worse circumstances. You know, you read stories about people that lost a limb or they had some horrible accident and they're still getting their shit done and doing it. They don't blame other people. So recognizing when your client, <coughs> excuse me, gets in that blame mode and just knowing what to do when addressing it as, as well, because there's this whole idea out there of this like quick fix, quick fix fallacy, you know, like I'm just going to do this right away. And this is why pain pills, injections and surgeries, they promise this whole idea of like, I'm going to magically get fixed and I'm not going to have to change anything. You have to put the work in. There's no quick fix. The only thing that is, is going to be time plus effort. And most people are unwilling to put the effort in. So they want to just pass it off and be like, well, I'm going to be a fat shit and not take care of myself. But I want this miracle thing to happen. You know, this client said to me, when we first started, we did the initial exam. He was all excited. He's like, man, I would do anything to avoid surgery. I'm so scared of having surgery. I don't want to do this. Two visits in when we're breaking some tissue down, you're, you're, you're functioning better, you're moving better, but you're in pain. Then he starts to panic. He's like, you know what, I'm just going to have that surgery, you know, because I, I can't live like this. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like, I don't know what you expected in this situation because you got a lot of shit going on and this ain't going to happen overnight. I'm always honest with people about like what it's going to take. Typically for me to get someone to a good spot, it usually takes me like six to 16 treatments when they're what I call metabolically compromised and just not fit. You know, they're looking longer, like 16 to 24. And I was honest with this person up front, but for some reason they're expecting this magic fix that isn't there. And we wonder why. We're in a pain pill epidemic and why people are resorting to this because they're short-sighted. They don't want to put the time in. They don't want to put the effort in. A big analogy that I learned over the years is from the Coast Guard. And the basically the idea of the Coast Guard is when they show up to a scene where there's like a boat capsized and there's people out in the water and they need to save somebody, 
they only save the people that are swimming towards them because they can only help the people that want to be helped. And you have to understand you have to have this in your clinic as well. You have to only be able to help the people that are swimming towards you. If someone's not willing to participate in the care, participate in the process, they're fucked. They're not going to get any better. It's not your job to do all the work. You're there to help, but you're sure as shit not going to carry them the whole way up the mountain. They have to participate in the care. Another thing I want you to learn is literally addressing the elephant in the room, the literal elephant in the room. And that's what I'm talking about. People are a metabolic mess. They eat like crap. They smoke, they drink, they don't take care of their body. And then they expect this miracle to happen. Just got to be honest with them about their health because there's two types of practitioners out there. There's the practitioner that tells them what they want to hear. And then there's a practitioner that tells them what they need to hear. I want you to be the practitioner that tells them what they need to hear and help them understand that you're here to help, but you're not going to do all the work. They have to meet you halfway and they have to do the work and participate. And if they're stuck blaming circumstances or blaming other people, don't even bother with these people because it's going to be a battle across the board. You're going to care more than they do because you cannot want it more than the client does. They have to participate in the care. One last thing. I practice stoicism and one of the ideas behind stoicism is the only thing that's truly in your control is your thoughts and actions. And one of those ideas is the idea called Amor Fati. I actually have a tattooed on my arm and the idea of Amor Fati is not only to accept what happens, but to love it. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Bad shit's going to happen to you. You're going to get kicked when you're down. You're going to have problems, but what are you willing to do when shit gets hard? Are you going to continue to play the victim role? Like the majority of the population, are you going to accept responsibility, take action and commit to the process so you can get better. You have to communicate that effectively with your clients or you're just going to be spinning your tires in the mud and never getting where you need to be. So a couple action steps. Number one, just assess your own health, your own health. Look where you're at. Don't be a hypocrite. If you're overweight, you don't take care of yourself, you don't exercise, you don't get treatment, but you're telling people to do all these things. You're a goddamn hypocrite. And I've been there too. I've been there than myself. I was a hundred pounds heavier than where I was. I drank. I did drugs, I did all sorts of stuff, and I'm trying to tell people how to be healthy and I don't look healthy myself. You gotta look the part so they take you serious as a healthcare provider and show them that you can get better. Number two, take responsibility for your own goddamn life. Quit being a victim. Victimhood is not gonna get you anywhere. And if your life isn't where you want it to be, your health, your wealth, your business, your relationships, take responsibility for that and make some goddamn changes and focus on being a better version of yourself. Number three, only focus on the clients or people that want to participate in the process and truly get better. If they just want to sit there and be passive and do jack shit and expect you to perform some miracle, tell those people it ain't going to work. And lastly, I give you full permission to tell the pain in the ass clients that you dread when you see them on your schedule. You know they don't take care of themselves and they're going to bitch and complain how their back still hurts, but they're 100 pounds overweight. They eat like shit. They don't take care of themselves and they're expecting a miracle. It's okay to tell those people to fuck off. That's all I got. If you guys enjoyed the show, that's awesome. Uh, go grab the free training. Just revamp that. Got a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, recently just... Got all the online training as well that has CU credits. Uh, if you're interested in that, reach out, send us a message. If we have some spots left, we'll, we'll give them to you, but those are filling up pretty quick. And lastly, go out there and be great today and this week because it's the only thing that truly pays. I'll see you guys on the next one.